the show that we did yesterday was very upsetting. It was about Darlie Routier, only the seventh woman in the history of Texas to receive the death penalty for the brutal murder of her five-year-old son. And as we found out, her only support comes from her family, several of whom are with us today. Darlie Routier appeared to be just your average American housewife, enjoying life in the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. It seems she had dreams and expectations of sharing the good life with her husband, Darren, and their three sons, Devin, Damon, and Drake. But what happened the fateful night of June 6, 1996, would change those dreams forever. I didn't murder my children. The police were called to the home of Darren and Darlie Routier in the middle of the night by a shaken and confused Darlie. But was this story what it seemed? Darlie's account of what happened soon began to counter what the authorities were uncovering in their investigation. Her husband, family members, and the community were shocked when just 12 days later, Darlie was arrested for the murder of her two sons, six-year-old Devin and five-year-old Damon. The jury was convinced the evidence pointed to Darlie as the murderer of her son, and she became only the seventh woman in Texas history to receive the death penalty. She currently sits on death row, still proclaiming her innocence. Her jail cell is not far from her former house in the suburbs, but a long way from her dreams of life with a loving family. We'll meet that family today, starting with Darlie's husband, who has always believed that she is telling the truth. I hope you'll join us as we discuss when a mom is on death row. Come on back. Most people following this case were not only appalled by its brutality, but shocked by the fact that Darlie's husband, the father of the boys that were killed, has stood by his wife, never doubting her innocence. Not once did it, did it occur to you, oh my God, what if she did do it? No, never did. But, but how, how have you been so certain? I mean, on the night of the murders, you were upstairs asleep with your infant son. Right. And Darlie was downstairs, had been watching TV with the two boys, and they had fallen asleep in the family room. Right. How can you be so sure? Well, first of all, Darlie, I was there. I was there seconds after it happened. I mean, there was too many things that, you know, they had come back with. And, I mean, I was there. I mean, I saw the look in her eyes. She was under the same shock that I was under. She never one time said, oh, my God, I'm bleeding, I'm hurt, I'm stabbed. I'm, you know, it was Devin, 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 and Damon, Damon, Damon. It was doing everything that we could do in a very short period of time to try to save them. You know, you just, you can't, no one can tell me. The prosecution wasn't there. The jurors weren't there. I was there. What an awful emotion to come running into that room. She's screaming, got 911 on the phone, and your beautiful sons, uh, one was already dead and one was dying. I can't explain it. I mean, you just, you just react. You just do what you have to do in order to make it right. And everything that we've tried and tried to accomplish from that moment hasn't worked. Hasn't worked. Darlie is on death row. You don't get to see her now, but what, twice a week? Once a week. Once a week? Mm -hmm. Two what hours. Are, what are those visits like? You can't touch her, am I right? No. There's a, an acrylic uh, partition between you of something? Steel and concrete. That's the only thing that's separating us. What do you talk to her about when you go to visit her? The family, what everybody's doing. Um, I try to talk to her as much as we can about our future. I have to build You're her up. You're convinced there'll be a future? Oh, yeah, definitely. Darlie uh, went through an extensive interview with our producing team, as you know, and we will be show sharing throughout the show today some videotape of some of her comments, uh, the first of which is about her life behind bars. It's a lot different than what people think it is, you know. I mean, like with me, I was so scared when I first came in here because, you know, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going over here with people that have really committed crimes. 
we have such a different image. You know, what we see on TV and our movies and stuff about people in prison and, and things like that. I think people have this general conception of, oh, everybody in prison says that they're innocent. That's not true. Coming up, we'll talk about how much Darley's family is willing to sacrifice in order to prove her innocence. We'll get that answer and find out how Darley's mom deals with having her daughter on death row. Stay close. We'll see you back here. from Darlie Routier's husband, Darren, about how he absolutely 100% stands by his wife. He believes in her innocence, even as she sits on death row for killing their son. Um, actually, both of, both of their beautiful boys, beautiful, angelic little boys, were, were killed. She was only tried for one because uh, in the state of Texas, if you are convicted of killing a person under the age of six, that's an automatic uh, capital offense, and so the prosecution... Uh, knew that it would complicate the case to bring in the other murder and that they would get this as strong a penalty with, uh, with a conviction for just the one. Are there questions out here? Anybody in the audience? Do we want to check in before I introduce you to some other guys? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Uh, Darren, I was wondering why you were upstairs sleeping and your wife was downstairs and that you didn't hear anything? Well, first of all, our, um, our house is about 3,400 square feet, so you have to imagine it's a pretty big house, two-story. Um, the baby had kept Darley awake pretty much the night before because he ruts, you know, he grunts when he was in his uh, baby bed. And she didn't sleep very good the night before. So the boys had already, you know, pulled out their blankets and their pillows and everything and were going to sit, you know, and sleep in front of the TV. And How? instead of separating them and take, go ahead and taking them upstairs, you know, it was the beginning of the summer. I mean, you just don't, you didn't even think twice about it. The nature of your marriage, your relationship, steady, strong? very strong. So there was no rift between the two of you no. that would have caused you to be sleeping apart? No. As a matter of fact, I can only think of maybe three other times in the 12 years that we've been together that we've spent, you know, any, any time apart. I want you to meet now. Um, Darlie's mom is with us and also Darren's parents. Uh, Darlie's mom is called Darlie Key, correct? Correct. And Darren's parents, Sarilda and Leonard. Having a daughter on death row, having a wife on death row. Uh, how, how have you been dealing with it? And when you, when you see her, what's your, what's your emotional reaction to that's my little girl now behind bars accused of this horrible thing? I feel a terrible injustice has been done to Darlie because I know Darlene. I know what was presented in the court. I know that there were a lot of lies there, and I know that she's innocent. And, and you've I'm never fight. allowed yourself to think... Well, that I'm not, suddenly she could have become psychotic. If that's the case, then what's she doing on death row? She would be belong in a, in a mental hospital. You know, mm -hmm. if, if a mother kills her child with a knife and she's perfectly normal before and, and, and then afterwards, then, you know, she's insane, though. Had she been no. depressed? No. We had psychiatrists that Darlene was not depressed. Or she was depressed a little, but she wasn't... Um, maniac depressive or anything like that. There were all those rumors that she was having there in postpartum depression, that she was struggling with her weight and trying to get it back together after the baby. You've seen the pictures of her five weeks after she had Drake. Um, she was I've... 128 pounds. I mean, Yeah, you there's know. nothing to do Do you have the over. picture here? Mm -hmm. How do you explain the entry in the, in the um, diary, or not the diary, but some journal papers that she had been keeping that she writes to the two boys before the murders uh, that says, I hope one day you will forgive me for what I'm about to do? That was addressed to Devin, Damon, and to Drake. And, uh, yeah, she was a little bit depressed at that point, but she never finished the letter. She never attempted suicide. You all now, as I understand it, um, Cyrilda, you have custody of the little baby. Yes. And we had to go to court. To get it. To get it. They removed him. They had him in good care in Dallas. And uh, Mama Darley called and said, you know, uh, they're coming to pick him up. They're come here to pick him up. That was the first we'd ever heard Child of Child Protection it. Services. Yeah. The two of you also have not wavered in your support of your daughter-in-law. 
Not, not, not for a not millisecond. For a Never. I was there immediately at the hospital as soon as we could get there. I was there the day we made the funeral arrangements. I was there in the hospital room. I was there when I showed her the casket pictures. I was there. Darley grieved at every step. I sit, sat by her on the other side of Darren all during the funeral when she cried the whole time into those bears. There's not a lot of new evidence in this case. And Darley was convicted on a lot of circumstantial evidence. This, all jury, this jury found to be yeah. persuasive. Um, you all have taken some extraordinary steps that have been financially draining for you as a family. I mean, it seems you're really willing to go the distance. One is you've offered a reward. Yes. Uh, it was my contention that uh, we hadn't really done everything that we could do. And until you go the full distance and do the full thing, then you've only made part of the race. And we don't have a lot of money, but I had purchased a home, and I'm in the process of restoring it. And uh, we had invested most of our money into the home, and so we decided that we would uh, put up any equity that we had in the home as a reward for anybody that was found and convicted. And for, that offer for, still stands today. That offer stands today, $100,000. There's another expense that I want to talk about when we come back, um, what you all consider to be the path to the truth. By regressing Darley to the night of the murders, going through regression therapy, and helping her to remember what really happened. We'll talk about that right after this. And one of the people who knows Darley probably better than anyone is her sister. Is it loyalty or blind faith that keeps her diehard belief in her sister's innocence? We'll meet her right after this. The Routiers in Happier Days, uh, beautiful family, three sons. Um, the only surviving son was seven months old at the time of the murder, little baby Drake, and he's now two? He's 20 months old, 21. He's almost two. Um, your question, please, ma'am. Yeah, I feel very sorry for all of you, but I must say that I feel most sorry for the little boy. And my question to you, Darren, or any one of you is, why isn't the little boy with you, the father, where he should be? Well, first of all, my life has been completely flipped upside down. In order for me to be able to take him into custody, it would be selfish of me to take him out of a perfectly good environment until I can stabilize one. They, they, they need... They need to know, though, you don't know, is the state came in and talked to us, both Darren and I, and said, if you believe in Darley, then you're not fit to have this child in your home. So they took the baby from us. It wasn't that we gave him willingly. We had Darren, to go you were to never court a, to you were never a suspect. Yes. No, he no. was a suspect in no. the beginning. Yeah, I mean, t you know, they, they talked about it. There, a, a lot of people out here are just reacting to the brutality and this incredible... Uh, sense of loss, and it's probably affected you most severely of anybody in the audience today. Can you stand up and explain why, what's going on? I had friends that were murdered in the Chino Hills. All the children were murdered. The parents were murdered. And if it was my child that was murdered, I would want to be with that child. Yes. I have two kids, and I know what it would feel like. So, Rilda, you, you... I, get, I get to be with that child anytime I want. Yes. So I get to go and visit. No, it's, but not, I don't it's have not a home. the same thing. I don't do you, have a do you home. Understand? I don't have a car. They took that right from us. They said because he defended his wife, he was not fit as a parent to have that child. Blame CPS if you're going to blame anybody. That's who took our rights yes. away as grandparents and a father. Let, let's talk a little bit, okay. Cyrilda, about what it's like for a family... And, and I wonder if at some level Baby Drake has got to have some sense of loss, too. I mean, he grew up with these little boys around, and they're gone. Well, when I first got him, he looked, every time he went to a store, he looked for his bubbas. I mean, he did just like this through the whole, he always did. But I'm a stay-home mom. I get to have him all day in a, in a environment that is like home, okay? Mama Darley works all day. Darren works all day. They get to be with him about three weeks at a time. 
but mine is really, really stable sometimes. I mean, you know, at least it gets, comes to me and it's a real stable environment. We want that poor baby whose life, his mother's been removed, his brothers are gone, he's not with his daddy and his other grandmother, to have something normal. Plus, we try not to talk about it every minute. It's their lives. They've got to work on it every minute. Drake, we're doing the best thing for Drake. Dar Dar Darren is sacrificing. Do not put him down for that. You need, he needs to be praised for thinking of Drake, what not do, himself. What but I want to tell you, yes, how does it feel to have a, be in my, my position? How we feel. Have you ever, I mean, Lisa, you have children. Mm -hmm. Have you ever went into the front yard with them, with one? And you're, you know, you're working in your garden and you look up and it's gone. That and panic. you run over to the other side and you look on the left side of your garden. And they're not there. And you look on the right side of the garden, and they're not there. And then you, and you know, you start running around in circles. And all of a sudden, you look over, and it's sitting right there. And this peace just comes all over you. Well, what we are in is that running around, we're searching, we're running. We want Darley out of here. Darley is innocent. She did not do this. There is no thinking any other way. Darley is saying, get me out of here. Get me out of here. What if you was to have your little, one of your little ones in a box? And it's trapped in this box. And you're saying, you know, it's saying, let me out, let me out. I didn't do that to let me out. And you can't get her out. Can you imagine what that feels like? Can you imagine not having that peace of having found them that, that you say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Have there you, she is, and she's fine. Have you all thought about, I know you believe that she is, is innocent, and you plan to regress her back to the night of the attack. The regression therapy is, is rather expensive. Very expensive, yes. Have you thought about, are you prepared, what if this regression therapy demonstrates that the state was right? That Darley did do it. Is anybody prepared to hear that? It's not right no, because... It's how they built this case up. They said Darley went crazy and, and was depressed and because she was too heavy and wasn't the center of attention. Well, that's the biggest yes. crock I've ever heard in my life. But none they of you had no motive. I want to focus more on um, the little baby, Drake, when we come back, who, who lived through the nightmare. Uh, as we said, he was seven months old when his brothers were killed. Uh, what kind of a mom can Darley really be to him? And, and when do you plan to tell him? And what do you plan to say to him about it? Uh, we'll find out more about that right after this. You heard Darren say that Darley is allowed, what, two visits a week? You, one. Only one visit a week. I thought she could get two, from two one from people. you. Two people can come at one visit for two hours, but they have to be together, that we share the visit. It must be... I, imagine now those of you who have children, and there's your baby across that partition, and you can't hold that child. That's torture. That must be torture if she is indeed innocent. It's very hard. We usually cry at each visit. How has she changed since the arrest? We saw her walking in saying, at, you know, as she was escorted off to jail, to prison, I didn't kill my children. Uh, what, what's her state of mind? I think she's a lot stronger now mentally because she's off all the antidepressants. Uh, she's off all the anxiety medicine, everything that she had taken right after she was injured and the boys were murdered. So she's in disbelief and she's grieving very, very strongly for the babies. Well, I have to say, you guys are obviously the victims and, of course, Drake, too, left over. And if all you people stand behind her and believe in her that strongly, she's got to be innocent. Because she is innocent. people that really know you would know you wouldn't do yes, that. That's right. right. Thank you for being able and, to know know that people like Susan Smith who she's been referred to and all these others if you're a mother could you murder your child and not want to die yourself well if a you psychopath babies, could yeah. a yeah. psychopath and could she is not and she was proven not to be we had a psychiatrist there who we saw had her. two psychiatrists the state had none yes you want to see the person who did this put to death? Oh, we do. Well, I don't, I don't know that I well, want him put to death. I, I don't talk. think that... We want him off the street. I don't yes. want to play God with anybody's yes. life. I don't think I have the right. It says in the Bible, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Darren, if the regression therapy 
proves that if she remembers something and, oh, my God, she confesses while under regression therapy. Are you prepared to stand by her then? I don't think I'll have to. That's not even an option. I mean, uh-huh. you don't, I don't know I don't, all the facts. Yeah, you don't all know the all facts the facts. I mean, we've, that we've she heard didn't everything. We've heard all the lies. We've heard everything that's been brought out. You know, we know and we have, there is no fabrication in this. You won't even let yourself go there. It's that the one, one thing percent. Darlie wants it herself. Oh, she, she yeah. wants it. She's anxious for it to happen. She tries for it every week. About it. Dana, you're Good. her sister. You're very close. Extremely close. In fact, the night of the, of the murders, uh, you had been staying on and off with Darlie, and, and uh, that night chose not to stay there because she wasn't feeling well. No, I couldn't get a hold of my boyfriend, and I didn't want him to come home, and I wasn't there and him to worry about me. So I had Darren go ahead and take me home. So you were probably the last person to really uh, see the boys alive? Kissed them goodbye and told them that I loved them. I got to say goodbye. I was the only one who did. Mm. What was your sister's state of mind that night? Okay. I spoke with Darlie at 9.30 that night. She was fine. I had been there the night before. She was fine. They tried on. She was getting remarried. Dana was getting married. And so I got to see the wedding gowns, and I asked them to try them on for me. And we played with the boys, and we were trying on clothes, and there was nothing wrong. Nobody's life is left untouched after something like this. That's right. What, what's been the, the biggest struggle for you, other than dealing with your sister being in pain and the loss of those darling little boys? Um, the people coming down on the family, that's the the hardest thing for anyone to live through because these people, they don't know my family, they don't know me, they don't know my sister. They weren't there to see the parties that she threw for Devin's first grade and kindergarten class. You know, she was the room mother. They weren't there to see her buy ice cream from the ice cream man for everyone in the neighborhood, you know. They weren't there to see the outrageous birthday parties and, you know, taking all the kids in the neighborhood to the pool and you know they weren't there to see the sleepovers and the whole family, the whole family came under attack thing. yeah came under attack <laughs> and your and, and and your sister your your daughter your wife's character was uh as is often the case in criminal investigations was uh brought into question when they have nothing else for a motive and they have nothing else to put out there for the public then they start attacking your character, and that's exactly what they did. But it was such outrageous lies. It was unreal. Dana, do you feel any, any? I don't know, I guess, I guess guilt would be the right word, um, because apparently you left the window open in the garage that the intruder allegedly entered in through? That window was always open. I always went out there, and... I would smoke a cigarette and ash out the window because, you know, we weren't allowed to smoke in the house because Darlie didn't smoke, Darren didn't smoke. But that's, that's not the reason I would feel guilt. I feel guilt because I wasn't there, because I didn't spend the night. And I think about that every day, you know. Mm. She feels mm. like something. Well, I could have been there. stopped him and I said, no, you would have been dead too, possibly. But I could have been able to say that there was someone else in the house. Survivor's guilt, what it's called. Let's put a pin in things right there. We'll come back with your questions and focus more on this family right after a break. In June of 96, the two little Routier boys, Damon and Devin, were stabbed to death. Uh, in February, the mother was convicted of, uh, of killing the younger boy. Uh, the, the nature of this crime was so... So brutal. Uh, no matter who did it, you can imagine this family trying to get it together and grieve, and uh, especially grieving in the wake of feeling that Darlie is innocent. Uh, our purpose today is not to retry the case, although they are gathering evidence. Uh, Darlie does get, as does every uh, convicted criminal in our country, uh, an automatic appeal, and they want hard evidence for for the appeal. But today, our focus is on what their lives are like and how they're coping and what about uh, the little baby who's now almost two years old who survived. Your question, please. Darren, I was just curious, where are you living at now and what kind of reaction or support, if any, are you getting from your neighbors? Well, I've, I've been, I'm living with Mama Darley, so um, 
I've had everything taken from me. I've sold everything that I own. We had to raise over $100,000 for the bond. Uh, they put on a million dollar bond, 500000 each on both accounts. We raised the money for the bond. They denied us bond on a hair that was not uh, hers. We, uh, then we went and got you know, some high dollar attorneys. What a lot of people don't understand is that it cost a half a million dollars to $800,000 for a capital murder case. Okay? Capital punishment, if you don't have the capital, you get punished. It doesn't matter what color you are, doesn't matter where you came from, if you don't have the money, you can't fight against the system. Can you fight the case on behalf of your wife and maintain a job at the same time? Well, we're trying. I mean, you know. Did you, did you lose your job that you had at no, the time? No, I own my own business, and I'm on the verge of losing it right now. I mean, I, I've not only had to go through all of this, but now I've got IRS problems, too. So you can't make the payments, then, you know, they want their money. All right. I wanted to know, um, uh, I, I know that the Drake was, like, only a couple of months old when the incident seven happened. Months, seven months. Um, and uh, does he have any knowledge? And uh, if he doesn't, how are you going to ease it in? when he's a, a little older. He, he knows who his mother is. He knows yeah. who his mother is. And, I show and him his brothers. pictures. We show him videos, and he's his mommy. Uh, he, I have pictures of the boys all over the house, and he calls them Bubba's, and he kisses them. Of course, he doesn't understand, but I don't want him and to... And he visits her. And, and he gets, see, since I got full custody, he gets to see her in Why do you now. tell him Mommy is not with him? He doesn't understand that. He probably thinks I'm Mommy, you know. But he, I'm not know. Mommy. I'm Grandmother. <laughs> So but he had, doesn't know the difference. You know, what is a baby two Darren, years old? Darren, have you old? talked what about what you, how you want to handle it with him? I mean, I would mm -hmm. say you've probably got, knowing how sharp kids are, maybe till he's five before he starts well, we being think, inquisitive. Lisa, that this is going to be over. I mean, we have full faith that we're going to have this regression. This is going to be a, this is really important to us. Darlie is dying to have it done. She knows this is one of her, you know, we have reasons for the appeal, which is, the, the only reason you get a new trial is if the judge made a mistake. It doesn't matter the evidence is different or anything. The judge makes a mistake. The judge or the lawyers make, make a mistake. mistake. Yeah, or the lawyers make a mistake or something. It's not real easy to get an appeal. We think we have that going. But if that doesn't work, we have this regression. This regression is really important. Darlie wants us to quit thinking and quit talking about it. Let's do it. She wants it for her peace of mind, and we want it for closure. She said that it was very difficult for her to deal with this whole issue of custody of her only surviving son. Now, here's part of what she said to us when we interviewed her behind bars. My lawyers, they prepared me that uh, what was going to happen with Drake, that I was going to lose custody, and that it was too much of a battle to fight that and to fight this at the same time. With everything that was happening, I felt that it would be best for Drake to go to Lubbock with Darren's parents to get out of the media and the, you know, I mean, because it was just such a circus. She uh, seems like she's dealing from a, a place of sense of resolve or strength. What is it that I'm detecting in her? I mean, she's, she's your God. family. <laughs> Sorry? Lord. God. Yes. She, and she's got this large family, and all of our family believes in Darlie and supports her 100 You know, it's not just these people you're seeing on stage. Our family is about 200 members. I want know? you to tell me when we come back. Um, in the beginning, the news reports showed your community shocked and your community gathering around you. As the news coverage went further and as Darley became a suspect, it polarized that community and a lot of people that had been on your side and embraced you uh, were the enemy. Not, not in my case. Anybody. Not in your case? I, I, I want to hear if anybody pulled a switcheroo and, and did you lose friends? over this. We'll no, be right back. No. A lot of questions I want to get to in the audience. Should we start with yours? Go ahead, please. How does it feel? Um, for, you're not allowed to see her or touch your wife. How does that keep you from not falling into depths of despair? He's allowed to see her. Yeah, not, I can't I mean, see her. I just her can't touch physical. her. Well, our relationship is kind of on a different scale now. We have a uh, emotional spiritual love for each other that is much deeper than what those walls and concrete can, can you know, withstand. Okay. Thank you. 
and I think that's how we would all like to believe that we would be as a spouse, that we would be faithful and undying in our support and our love and steadfast in our commitment. Um, but there is this possibility. I mean, you never thought she would be convicted. No. She may not get this. She may not come out of this thing. She may die an old woman on death row or some strange thing may happen where they may actually b kill this woman by lethal injection. And that has she won't be an old woman on death row because the rules in Texas have changed. And if they kill her, then the blood is on the hands yes. of the people in Texas. And she'll tell you she'll just be with Devin and Diamond sooner. She has a very strong faith that she knows that if they do take her life, that she will be in heaven with Devin and Damon. But she says, I don't need to die for something I didn't do. And she's going to continue to fight. And we're going to continue to fight. You know what, Lisa? If they were to kill her tomorrow, we would still keep fighting. We would prove her to be innocent so that death row will no longer be. That might be our goal. We don't know. You know, you talk about different things that were brought out and... Um, how it made us feel as a family with our friends and our neighbors mm -hmm. and all that. One of the things that they put out, they didn't have anything on Darley. So one of the things that they put out there was that they found a motel receipt and Darley was having this affair with somebody and she stayed at this hotel because of the receipt, okay? Well, the picture that you have right over here on the stage is that hotel and the affair she was having with, was with her husband and her three little boys there. Does Darley ever say to you, Here's how I want my son to be raised. Uh, yeah. Does she try to mother from behind bars? Yes. She likes to know if something to do with him, his haircut. Uh, she wants to be clothes. She sends him letters and gifts. Yeah. She makes stuff for him. She. Uh, she made a. She's picture. upset right now that she's not making dolls anymore. She's making quilts for the guards. She said, at least if I'm making dolls, and I know they're going to go to children in hospitals, then I have a purpose of working. But I if really I'm making quilts for someone. You know, I have no purpose. I realize how, how this question will sound because this woman is fighting for her very life. But does she ever present herself, Darren, as being concerned about you and your needs or insecure about... Does she still relate to your marriage in terms of an intimacy level and is she worried that you may be attracted to someone while still fighting her fight? Yeah, I think that's that you normal. may get involved with someone. As a matter of fact, I, I would think that if she quit, she would quit loving me. You know, they say that when you love someone, you let them go free. Well, I'm not going anywhere. Hmm. I'm staying right there. Hmm. We'll be right back. Right after this. Darley has said that some of the night of the attack is lost to her. She was asleep when the alleged intruder broke in and that's part of the reason why the family wants to get to this uh, therapy, therapy regression. And that's the nature of your question, sir? Yes, I was just wondering if regression therapy will hold up in court. Well, they're trying to make it court ready and by that, that means that um, it's not just hypnosis. It's more than that. What they will do is um, audio tape and videotape She'll be taken back to her childhood either with the help of drugs or hypnosis, whichever is needed. The drugs would be, in fact, a truth serum type drug. And then um, they will actually do testing on her, DNA testing, while she goes through it. Because, of course, when you relive the actual event, your blood chemistry will change. So all of that together is a lot more than just hypnosis. And we feel like that the courts, it's not been denied in the courts. And we feel like the appellate courts will accept it. And she's very anxious to have this happen. Yeah. Your question, please. Um, I feel for all of you, you are all obviously victims. And I think everyone, I can speak for everyone in the audience when I say we all feel for you. Um, I'm wondering, and I hope it's not too personal a question, but um, where is Darley's father and what sort of relationship does she have with him? She has a good relationship. But, you know, none of us really like being on TV. <laughs> And, and he is a very private person. He has been there financially and emotionally for her. We've been divorced a lot of years. Uh, he lives in Pennsylvania, and we lived in Texas. So, Someone in the audience had a very good question that I'm going to get to when we come back. Uh, they wanted to know, uh, very simply, why, why, why you are here. You don't want to be on TV. 
What is your passion about this, and what is it that you want from them, from us? We'll be right back. So I said there was a question, and here it is. You said you don't want to be on TV, but my question to you is, why are you here? It must make you feel better that you can present your side of the case. But do you also want us to help you, the viewing audience? Do you have questions to us? What can we do for you? Well, one of the things we want you to know that is, if anything ever happens in your home regarding a child, you will be the very first suspect. And unlike some of the other high-profile cases that are out there right now today, like the John Benet Ramsey case, Darren and Darlene never once asked for an attorney. They went willingly and told them everything, never asked for an attorney until she was arrested. Don't do that, because believe me, you're going to be the target. That's just how they're trained, and they'll be the first to tell you that. But we want you to know that what you hear is not always the truth. And we want more supporters for Darley because when we go back to trial, if we have to go back and retry this case, maybe you'll be a little better educated about the ways of the judicial system. And believe me, they're totally out of whack in Texas. Yes. And I mean, the media. And the media. Regardless of yes. Darley's guilt or innocence, uh, on this we can all agree. Um, this family, as so many of you have pointed out, they you really are victims. Uh, no matter whether you get this appeal, no matter whether she is ultimately exonerated or not, um, what, an, what an awful thing for a family. What an awful way to test your loyalty and your love and your devotion. Um, and how awful for you not to be able to get over grief, grieving for those two little boys, because this will always be... We haven't really begun to hanging, grieve. Yeah, hanging over your heads, hanging over your heads while she sits there and waits. We thank you very much. Our thanks to the uh, studio audience here and most of all you folks at home for spending the hour with us. Take care and we'll see you back here next time. Bye for now. My question is for Darren. Why are you living with Darlie's mom and not your own parents? Because his business is down in Dallas and they're 400 miles away. Yeah, I mean, I can't just up and move it. Besides, it cost me about 20 grand to move my equipment. So, you know, I have an electronic business that I do testing for NASA and Lockheed, TI, things like that. So, Which is all da uh, Dallas-based. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he and almost lost it because the detectives from the state went and interrogated all his customers. She's all new with